Hey guys, how are you? David DeFranco here from GearPop.com as well as DeFrancoGaming.com. I just got my hands on iOS 7 literally within like the last hour thanks to the Alex Firth on Twitter. I will link him right below for hooking me up with iOS 7 beta. I greatly appreciate it. Alright, so for this video I'm going to go through a list of features which I have right here on my notes of that I think are worth showing. Now, first of all, let me show you iOS 7. I mean, it's obviously dramatically different. I mean, this is the most unique version of iOS that we have seen since the iPhone's original launch in 2007. I mean, it is so significantly different. There's so much to talk about. But for this video, I want to talk about a few features, well, a handful, really, that I think are worth noting. Now, number one is what you just saw, fade on and fade off display. Very subtle, but I've always, always appreciated this, uh, whether it's an Apple product, Microsoft product, Google, whatever. I just love the fluidness of fade off, fade on, and fade off. It's very classy. Next up is the flashlight, which is part of Control Center, swiping from the bottom. You do get the flashlight built in, and... That is the sound of all of the flashlight developers slowly dying. Sorry guys, but it had to happen sooner or later. Anyway, back here on my iPod Touch, you do press this, and it stays on, but get this, unlike iOS 6 and any apps that I tried for that matter, turning the display off, the flashlight remains to be on. I think this is a great feature and definitely something I welcome with open arms or open fingers for that matter. I mean, this is something that I think is great and it's actually a feature I used all the time on my iPhone but I always hated when I shut my display off, the flashlight would go off, but now that problem is gone. Okay, so this next feature is very subtle and it's a little difficult to show on camera, but that's the fact that we finally have 3D home screen functionality. Look at that. You can sort of see it. The iPod Touch and iPhone both have a gyroscope built in for those not aware, and that's what makes this feature possible. And turning it off and going to the lock screen, it even rotates a bit. You can see the stars moving. For instance, keep your eye on those bright stars right there, where my thumb is. Of course, it turns off. You see the stars right there? Now they moved off screen. How cool is that? And now speaking of wallpapers, the next feature I want to talk about is the introduction of live wallpapers. Now this is something I've honestly always loved about Android and if you jailbroke your iOS device then it was possible, but it's finally native. Thank you Apple. So when you go into settings and you change your wallpaper, you now see a setting for dynamic, which means changing, and stills. I think they should just do dynamic and static just to make it fair, but that's just me. Anyway, tapping on dynamic gives you choice of currently two wallpapers that are animated. Check it out. Little orbs fading in. Very cool. And this one's kind of the same thing, just a different color scheme. They'll eventually get there. Actually, I found out the orbs don't show up right away. I don't know if that's a bug, but as soon as I set it, then they actually begin the show, as you can see in the background. So I think that is a bug in iOS 7. Still though, the feature is there, and Apple, seriously, thank you so much. It's little things like that that I really appreciate. Next up is the app switcher. So let's go into my weather app. And there's a beautiful, beautiful new weather app. I mean, I love this. This is so freaking classy. Look at that, you can scroll between your uh, hours the cities, it's just very cool. So anyway, if I want to switch over to Safari or something, I press my home button twice. But now you see this beautiful card view, kind of like WebOS and maybe Android. I'm not totally sure, I'm not primarily an Android user. But how nice is that? That's very cool. So if I want to switch into my calculator, I can go back into my switcher, go back into Safari, or you can just tap the icon, and if you want to throw the app, not throw the app, if you want to close the app, whoops, just saw a bug there, look at that. If you want to close the app, it's definitely a little sluggish, you simply slide it out. A lot easier than it was in iOS 6, that's for sure. This next feature is very, very subtle, but do you see what I see? 
Yes, the second hand on the clock app is actually moving. This is a real time clock icon. Finally, again, I'm gonna repeat myself, but it's the little things that I really appreciate. It is indeed 5.07 p.m. as you can see right there. And it's 5.07 p.m. on the clock. And the second hand's about to hit the 12, so let's watch the minute hand move in real time. Here it comes. Of course, the screen freaking faded. Awesome timing, but still, I'm gonna take Apple's word for it. I'm pretty sure it moved in real time. This next feature is probably a godsend for many, many iOS enthusiasts like myself, and that is the fact that Newsstand, which is right here, is finally movable. Okay, my iPhone just crashed. Looks like I found a bug. Hey, it happens. Well, actually, I said iPhone. I meant iPod Touch. Actually, that was a very quick restart. I guess it was just booting back to the uh, lock screen. Anyway, let's try that again. You can move Newsstand into folders now. That alone is pretty freaking awesome. This next feature is definitely worth mentioning, and I totally agree with Apple's take on this. I mean, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Now, previously, with, with uh, iOS 6 and previous iOS versions before that, you would swipe right on your main home screen to search, right? Yes, well, on iOS 7, it's completely different, and it makes more sense this way. You simply swipe down on any of the home screen. So even if we're on page two or page three or even page seven, you can now simply swipe down and search shows up right there. Because previously, you had to swipe all the way to your primary home screen, then swipe right just to search. But now, you can do it on any screen. And now the last feature, but certainly not least, is Control Center. This is something I've been wanting for a while now. You can now turn airplane mode on and off instantly. And same goes for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Do Not Disturb, Orientation Lock. You can change your brightness in real time, thank God. That is something that's always been possible on the, I on the iPad, but not the iPod Touch or the iPhone. Then you have your music controls, volume, airdrop, flashlight, which I showed you previously. Let's turn that off. Clock, which is pretty cool. Swipe up, calculator, thank you. That's actually huge with me because I actually do use my calculator app pretty often. Swiping back up and you can access the camera. I don't know if I was showing it on screen there, so let me do that again. I may have fallen off screen, sorry about that. Right there and just switch and boom, there we are. Very cool. Now guys, that is my quick preview of iOS 7. Again, I just downloaded this within the last hour, so I obviously have a lot to learn, but so far, I'm really loving it. I mean, I'm not totally loving it, like, you know, in terms of 100%, I gotta be honest, icons like the Safari icon, and actually, mail is kind of growing on me, but Safari, Apple's definitely got some work to do, but I believe somebody in Apple's design department came out and said that these icons are not final. And that's something you definitely have to keep in mind, guys. I mean, it's only June, and we won't be seeing iOS 7 probably until late October. All right, guys, so that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of iOS 7. Just post below with your comments. Are you loving it? Are you hating it? Let's get an interesting discussion going. I appreciate your ongoing support. I just screwed that up. And I will see you in my next video. Look at that lock screen. So freaking beautiful.